Hello and a very warm welcome to this online service from St Mary's Church Withal. I'm Amanda Featherstone, the Vicar of St Mary's, and I'm so pleased that you are joining us online for this act of worship. Our church have been over these weeks looking at the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, and we've entitled this whole series Building the Future Together as we seek God as we move forward. I uh, hope that you have been engaging with Nehemiah as a book of the Bible through which God speaks to us. I wonder what you remember from the teaching over the weeks and I'd encourage you uh, to go back over it and ask God what he's saying to you. I received a letter this week uh, from a lady who's uh, in a nursing home and she explains that she can't link to our services because the Wi-Fi signal doesn't reach to her room. And yet she writes in this letter that she has been reading the book of Nehemiah. I'm wowed by how the family of St Mary's keep in touch with one another, but I'm also wowed how people are reading God's word and seeking to hear from him. And that's what we're doing today because we're in the last week of our sermon series in Nehemiah. So we're in chapter 13 and Adam Parker's going to come and speak to us. And what we see here, sadly, after the dedication and celebration of the wall being built last week, we now move on to see that the people drifted away. And so our topic today is keeping God at the centre. How do we keep going and keep focused on God? And the key text that Adam's going to refer to is in verse 11. Why is the house of the Lord forsaken? But we are gathering, coming to the house of the Lord, even though we're online. And so we pray now that we will meet with God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, even though we're in different places, uh, will you bind us together in this service? as your people. Lord, would we know afresh your love and faithfulness? Would we be assured of the forgiveness we have in Jesus? Would you enable us to worship you? And as we open your word, would you speak to us and lead us forward? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to sing and worship together now uh, a new song that our band have recorded in the building. Uh, let's worship with the goodness of God. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God
we've just sung, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. One of the ways in which God has been so good to us is sending Jesus to die for us. And one of the ways he's faithful is keep on forgiving us over and over. For I know it's true for me that I don't always keep God at the centre, but we can ask God for his forgiveness now. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sin, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Know God's forgiveness, and as forgiven people, let us now hear God's word read to us by John Smith, and then unpacked for us by Adam Parker. Today's reading is from Nehemiah, chapter 13, verses 1 to 14. On that day the Book of Moses was read aloud in the hearing of the people, and there it was found written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever be admitted into the assembly of God, because they had not met the Israelites with food and water, but had hired Balaam to call a curse down on them. Our God, however, turned the curse into a blessing. When the people heard this law, they excluded from Israel all who were of foreign descent. Before this, Eliashib, the priest, had been put in charge of the storerooms of the house of our God. He was closely associated with Tobiah, and he had provided him with a large room, formerly used for storing grain, incense and temple articles, and also the tithes of grain, new wine and olive oil prescribed for the Levites, musicians and gatekeepers, as well as the contributions for the priests. But while all this was going on, I was not in Jerusalem, for in the 32nd year of Atataxes, king of Babylon, I had returned to the king. Sometime later, I asked his permission and came back to Jerusalem. Here I heard about the evil thing Eliashib had done in providing Tobiah a room in the courts of the house of God. I was greatly displeased and threw all Tobiah's household goods out of the room. I gave orders to purify the rooms and then I put back into them the equipment of the house of God, with the grain offerings and the incense. I also learned that the portions assigned to the Levites had not been given to them, and that all the Levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. So I rebuked the officials and asked them, Why is the house of God neglected? Then I called them together and stationed them at their posts. All Judah brought the tithes of grain new wine and olive oil into the storerooms. I put Shelemiah the priest, Zadok the scribe, and a Levite named Pediah in charge of the storerooms. I made Hanan, son of Zachar, the son of Mataniah, their assistant, because they were considered trustworthy. They were made responsible for distributing the supplies to the fellow Levites. Remember me for this, my God, and do not blot out what I have said what I have so faithfully done for the house of my God and its services. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The title of today's message is Keeping God at the Centre. If you are anything like me, then there are so many things that fight for your attention and devotion every day. Jobs and family, friends and perhaps the latest box set which you just have to finish. They are the demands and the distractions of life and they are all around us. And with all this, there is a danger that our relationship with God takes a back seat. It becomes just another part of the busy lives we live. And when we do this, we begin to remove God from his rightful place in our lives. We begin to place our trust in the world around us instead of in him. If you want to understand just how important and serious this is, then you need only look to God's first commandment. What does God say? You will have no other God before me. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. God demands to be at the centre of your life, the number one priority above all things. I, uh, I don't know if you have been following the sermon series from the book of Nehemiah, but Nehemiah's story is not a complicated one. It's, um, it's a story of revival and in particular how God used one man to help bring revival to people who had lost their direction and hope from years of oppression. Nehemiah shows us what can happen and what can be achieved by God's people when God is given his rightful place. But we also see how easy it is to let the things of the world, the demands and the distractions of life creep back in and begin to take priority once again. In the last chapter of the story, we find out that God's chosen people have begun to forget his commands and, and the covenant that, that he's made with them. They, um, they've once again removed him from his rightful place at the centre of their lives and have begun to turn their, uh, their back and turn back to their old ways. In verse 11 of the last chapter of the book, Nehemiah cries out and he says, why is the house of God forsaken? He's, he's saying to the people, once again, you've removed God from the centre of your daily lives. He, he's saying to them, you, you've neglected the most important priority in your lives. And instead, you've, you've given in to the demands and the distractions all around you. Now, the story doesn't end there. And if you read on, you can see how once again, through God's grace, he leads his people back into a right relationship with him. You see, anything can become a God to us. Any, anything we worship or put an excessive amount of time into or prioritise above our relationship with God, um, it can take priority over him. Even your feelings can become a God if you allow them to control you. We, um, we all worship something. Um, that's because we are created by God to worship. John chapter 4, 23 says that the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such a people to worship him. If, um, if we don't worship God and prioritise him, then we will worship something or someone, which might even include ourselves. So why should we make God the centre of our lives? Why, why are we created to worship him and prioritise him above everything else? Well, firstly, and most importantly, because God is God and he deserves our praise and our celebration for who he is and what he's done. But also because it's extremely good for us. Tommy Walker from the Billy Graham Evangelical Foundation says this, when we worship, we prioritize God above all things, including our worries and our distractions. We get realigned, refreshed and refueled. We find unspeakable joy and indescribable peace. We discover the breakthrough strength of God, which enables us to walk in truth, live in his presence and see him fight our battles for us. Throughout the Bible, you can read of individuals who made the choice to prioritise God above and over all things, even their own feelings and emotions. Do you, uh, do you remember the story of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts? Having been beaten and thrown into prison, cold, hungry and desperate, what did they do? They chose to prioritise God, to worship and they saw him break down jail doors. But prioritising God, giving him the central place in our life is not something that comes, it, it, it's not something that comes naturally to us. We are sinful and often selfish, choosing to prioritise what we believe is best for us instead of obeying God and trusting in what he has planned for us. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we, we um, have to purposely choose 
to place God in the centre of our circumstances and look solely to him. It's, um, it's not that God doesn't care about all of life's troubles and distractions. It's exactly the opposite. He loves you and he longs for you to come to him as you are. But he wants you and expects you to come to him in gratitude, in thanks and praise for who he is and what Jesus has done for you. You see, when we um, when we take the focus off ourselves and direct it through worship towards God, then we can experience the inexpressible joy that comes from faith in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. But you have to make it your priority to have a deep, intimate relationship with God, to let him into every area of your life. I, um, I want to encourage you today um, with a verse from Philippians chapter four, verse six. The Bible talks a lot about our fears, our worries and our anxieties. And God tells us time and time again not to fear, not to worry, not to be anxious. And yet we do. I am convinced that the, the reason we so often remove God, either consciously or unconsciously from having priority over our lives, is because we doubt him. We doubt that he truly cares, that he really understands where we are at, that he will protect us. And so we, we take back control. We, we take back control and go it alone, believing that we know best. The crazy thing is that we still go through the same trials and tribulations, but without the peace of God in our hearts. Philippians chapter four, six says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice that there is, um, there is nothing in this particular verse about God answering our prayers. The focus here is not on answered prayer, but on the peace and the protection that comes in trusting God's sovereignty over and above all things when we place our trust in him. So let me ask you, do you trust God? him do you believe God is in control of all things in your life you see nothing happens without God's permission Psalm 24 verse 1 says that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it God is in charge of all things nothing takes place without him agreeing to it life is not a series of random events or accidents Everything that happens is planned and orchestrated by him. Even the devil has to seek his permission. If you can grasp this truth, if you can comprehend the fact that God is sovereign over all things, that he is all powerful, all knowing, ever present, then the promises made in Philippians chapter four, and for that matter, all of God's promises in the Bible will speak to you in a way that you have not known before. This week, I encourage you if you are not already doing so, to spend dedicated time with God. Read the Bible, spend time speaking with him in prayer, thanking him for who he is and bring before him your worries and your anxieties. Keep him at the centre of all you do. Amen.
At this point in the service, I want to give us a chance to pause, to listen to God further and to respond. We've heard God's word unpacked for us. What is the challenge of not forsaking the house of the Lord? Of putting God at the centre and allowing Jesus to be our everything. We're going to pause now and I ask you to open your hearts and minds to the movement of the Spirit and to anything that God wants to say to you now and any response you want to make. Come Holy Spirit, direct us and lead us. We're going to continue in prayer and listening to God now and Andy's going to lead us. In our prayers today, we're going to use the response, faithful God, to which you reply, glorify your name. As we reflect on Nehemiah's desire for God's ways to be practised in the rebuilt Jerusalem, so we pray for people and nations to follow God in our own time. We pray for God's faithfulness to be known in our world. Faithful God, glorify your name. In a world of change and hope, of fear and adventure, as we experience fresh uncertainty over the coronavirus, imposing restrictions on our lives and the fear of further infection. Help us to have hope and to embrace the adventure of living by your commandments. Faithful God, glorify your name. In human rebellion and obedience, in our seeking and our finding. We often do not follow where you, our God, lead us. Help us to seek you and to do what you are calling us to do, and in so doing, find true fulfilment. Faithful God, glorify your name. In the common life of our society, in prosperity and need. The significant threat to our economy from both the Covid crisis and Brexit is likely to lead to loss of jobs and more people experiencing poverty in our nation. Help us, your church, to bring communities together and to share resources. Faithful God, glorify your name. As your church proclaims your goodness in words and action. Lord, we ask that you will help St Mary's to be a beacon of light in these difficult times. Give Manda wisdom as she seeks to lead the church forward, and especially in praying for godly people to join the PCC through our APCM next month. Faithful God, glorify your name among our friends and in our homes. We pray especially for our friends and families as the opportunities to meet together are restricted due to the COVID lockdown. Help us to keep in touch through any acceptable means so that relationships can be maintained. Faithful God, glorify your name. In our times of joy, in our days of sorrow. Help us to find times of joy 
even when we are saddened by the restrictions placed on us, take away our anxiety as we see an uncertain future ahead of us. Faithful God, glorify your name in our strengths and triumphs, in our weakness and at our death. Lord, help us to see you working in our lives and in the lives of those around us, so that like Nehemiah, we may give praise to you for all you are doing. Help us to continue to trust you through all the days of our lives. Faithful God, glorify your name. In your saints in glory and on the day of Christ's coming, we thank you for those we know who have died and we ask that you'll be with us, the families, as we grieve. Faithful God, glorify your name. So let us now draw our prayers to a close by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. I now want to give you a few bits of information. Firstly, again, a big thank you. Uh, this comes to all those who have responded to our uh, sermon and our word last week uh, about giving. And thank you also for those who are continuing to think under God how to respond to that word. Thank you also for those that have been praying and been involved practically in sorting out the church and school hall floor. Uh, you uh, may have picked up that there has been some issues with the floor, it's expanded and there's been a bulge in it. So just to say uh, that the work on that floor is starting tomorrow, uh, Monday the 28th of September and uh, that will mean uh, that because the work will take about 10 days, we will not be able to have a service in the church building next Sunday. So no service in the building next Sunday, the 4th of October. Do though join online. So next week, 4th of October is our harvest celebration. And uh, we're gonna continue to pick up the theme we had last year of caring for God's creation. And it's with delight that I tell you that Michelle Parton, previously curate of St Mary's, is going to be our guest speaker. And uh, she's going to be uh, speaking on our relationship with God and our relationship with God's wor world. And it's going to be great. Uh, we all know uh, Michelle's passion uh, about God and uh, his creation and looking after it. And it's going to be great to hear from her. And because it's harvest, we want to try something and I really hope you're going to join in with it. What we're going to do is we're going to try a Zoom coffee after church. So you'll be able to uh, get the details from Cathy in the church office. You just sign in and we'll be in small groups. Bring your coffee with you. And the other thing I wanted to make it was cake Sunday. If you want to make, buy or bring along a cake uh, for that uh, harvest coffee and chat after the service, it'll uh, start from 11.30. Um, the APCM, the church meeting, will take place on the 18th of October. It will be on Zoom, but for those who can't link online, there will be the opportunity to be in the church building. Finally then, we know that there are some church uh, families uh, who are grieving and we are praying for them. Uh, funerals of uh, Eileen Lee and uh, Keith Emery are happening tomorrow, Monday. So please do pray for the families. And if you would like the information of the live link up for Eileen Lee's funeral, please contact Brian Lee. And so a closing prayer and blessing. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Do get in touch anytime if you would like to chat through anything or have someone pray with you and uh, my link to my thought on Thursday about happiness and joy is given after this service. Take care, do hope you'll join us for our harvest celebration next Sunday.